First time? No, it's not. It's not exactly the first time. I mean, they don't. They know their culture. They know that that's the way it is done. That that's the way it is being done in China. Okay. So, but that is how, how important. That is how important that uh, that aspect of uh, of uh, discipleship is all about. See. Good okay. Good morning, everybody. Jake Leachko here. Today is September 14, and it's a beautiful feast day today the feast of the exaltation of the holy cross okay feast of the exaltation of the holy cross and we're going to talk about the holy cross okay but before that let's read the gospel because um, the gospel is uh, also talking about the holy cross today or at least the prefiguring of the holy cross so the gospel is from uh, saint john chapter 3 verses 13 to 17 jesus said to nicodemus no one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. So as we said, today is the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. Right? In the first part of this Gospel, um, where, where we read about Moses lifting up the serpent in the desert, okay? the lifting up of the serpent in the desert is like the image of our Lord being lifted up on the cross. Okay? You know the story of that? Uh, our Lord punished uh, you know, the, the Israelites by, because they kept complaining and whining and complaining to God about the fate that they had after leaving Egypt. And so God punished them by sending serpents, right? But then, uh, so and then now the people started dying and they started complaining to Moses and they started to be apologetic and ask the pardon for having uh, complained to God. So uh, in order to uh, save them from that, God said, okay, Moses, make a, make a figure of a serpent, put it on a mounted on a staff and put it somewhere in a pedestal high up. And so that anybody who gets bitten by the serpent just looks at that and gets cured. Okay. That serpent on a staff okay the cure for the serpent bite in the first place is a prefiguring of what our lord was to be like for us catholics and for christians our lord hanging on the cross like this which we display in places like churches or uh, our homes or in in any other uh, sacred place of worship when we look at that cross, that cross is supposed to be a figure for us, for our cure. For our cure from what? For our cure from sin, right? The disease of sin, the scourge of sin. The, the same scourge, uh, of course, a kind of similar scourge that the Israelites had in the desert, right? But for us, it is a cure for our sins. Okay, and today, today we're celebrating the feast uh, yet of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, right? Um, and uh, well, yesterday I uh, posted something on my Facebook uh, timeline about the history of the cross, right? So if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about how, uh, how um, St. Uh, Helena found uh, the Holy Cross, it's there on my uh, Facebook timeline. But today we'll, we will concentrate on talking about the exaltation the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. So let's do a little vocabulary review here. What does exalt mean? See? Exaltation comes from the word exalt. So what does the word exalt mean? To put in high esteem. To put in high esteem. Okay. To elevate. Right. To uh, have high regard for. Okay. Um, what else? How else do we understand that? To value, to value highly, right? To 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 give uh, a, a high uh, a dignity, right? To have to have high dignity. So uh, that is exactly what this feast is all about. 
the exaltation of the Holy Cross. It is a time where we can remember that the Holy Cross has an exalted and esteemed value in the life of every uh, Catholic, okay? in the life of every Christian. Okay? The cross has an esteemed value. Because before, before when, uh, when the, the cross was, was a uh, symbol of something else, right? Before, the cross was an instrument of torture, was an instrument of punishment. Okay? One of the most dreaded kinds of punishments that you can that, that the Romans uh, ever imposed on uh, on prisoners. Okay? It was uh, the death penalty, as far, you know, as far as uh, any prisoner was concerned at that time of the Romans. It was the most excruciating, the most painful, the most dreaded kind of punishment that was ever imposed on a criminal. But our Lord chose the cross. To be his instrument of choice for what? Saving for saving souls, for the salvation of souls, right? Jacob, right? Joseph, for the salvation of souls, right? So from, uh, from an instrument of torture, it became an instrument of salvation. From a, a prop of shame, it became the pedestal of honor and glory right from from a position of defeat it became a position of victory from a means of condemnation it became the medium of forgiveness okay? so how beautifully our lord transformed the meaning the meaning of the cross the meaning of the cross and and made it into something that uh, for us Christians would be of an exalted value, okay? exalted value. And of course, there are, there are many other symbolisms that uh, we can read up uh, and we can understand about the cross, right? You know, folks, the Catechism of the Catholic Church is full, full of so many um, uh, references that we can read up on, see, uh, about the Holy Cross, okay, and um, and about the use of the uh, of the cross in the life of a Christian. In fact, in fact, uh, um, the the holy the cross, the sign of the cross, the sign of the cross is a sacramental. Okay? Is a sacramental. You know that there are that there's a difference between the sacraments. How many sacraments do we have? Seven. Seven. There are seven sacraments, and there are sacramentals. Okay? The sacramentals are numerous. Okay? There are many more of those, right? From the rosary to the Holy Cross to uh, to holy water to okay, so many other many other things that we use in the in uh, for worship and liturgy and things like that are called sacramentals. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference between the sacraments and the sacramentals? Okay? The sacraments are what is it, Sophia? The sacraments are. Sensible signs of grace, right? They're sensible signs of grace. In other words, they confer grace. Okay, but the sacramentals are what? What's the difference? Okay, the sacramentals are things okay, that excite in us some pious dispositions. Okay, that they 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 get us to to be in a in a in a disposition of piety. They help. They draw, drive us okay, to be pious and to and to uh, and to uh, worship our Lord uh, in a in with a proper disposition. Okay? And, and these are normally things, stuff <laughs> that that we that we use up, like water, the rosary, uh, the the cross. See, those those are called sacramentals. They do not by themselves confer grace, right? But by using them. We are putting ourselves in a disposition of receiving grace from our Lord. See? What do you call the grace that you may receive from sacramentals? If sacraments confer grace. supernatural grace, yeah, they, and sacramental grace, very good, Sophia. So the sacramentals can help us receive actual grace. See? Actual grace. Okay. Now, so today, 
today is that big feast, the big feast of uh, uh, the exaltation of the cross. Now, let's examine how how we make use of the cross and the sign of the cross being the sign of a Christian, right? So, uh, let's review. Do you know that there are two... Uh, every every Christian... Uh, uh, um, how do you call it? <laughs> the, the tradition, okay? Uh, would have different ways of making the signs of the cross, right? So, um, we belong to the Latin uh, uh, rite, the Roman rite, and we will talk about that and the way that we use the cross uh, in our own uh, Latin tradition, right? And how do we do it? We have, we have two ways of doing the sign of the cross, right? First is the, uh, the, simple, the simple way, right? You, you do this in the name of the Father, right? In the name of the Father and of the Son, down by your belly, and the name of the Father, it's going to be reversed on the video, okay? Because the video is reversed <laughs> anyway. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. right? Amen. Okay, that's the simple way, right? Now, but you would sometimes see me doing the long way, right? The long way, and the long way is per signum crucis, de inimicis nostris, libera nos Deus noster, in omne patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. Right? What does that mean? Yeah. In nomine patris, in, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, by the, sorry, in, <laughs> by the sign of the cross, deliver us from our enemies, in, O oh Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. No, inimici is, is enemies, yeah, but of course, who is the enemy? The enemy is the devil, you know, and the enemy leads us to sin, so um, the, the meaning is the same. Okay, so. One thing that we can we can uh, we can try to understand is that well you know when we make the sign of the cross let's do it properly uh, let's honor the cross properly by making the proper sign of the cross uh, let us let us avoid the the, the the temptation of doing it the clumsy uh, clown like way right some people do. <laughs> you don't know exactly what they're doing, right? Are, 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 we, are we ashamed of what we're doing? Or uh, are we lazy to just make the proper sign of the cross? Or uh, uh, We don't know. We don't know what, uh, what purposes people have. But maybe starting today, a good Catholic practice would be make the sign of the cross properly. Right? Do the sign of the cross properly. And uh, make, it, make it a big sign of the cross, right? To show that we are... Uh, uh, proud of our identity as Catholics, see? Uh, to be proud of our identity as Catholics and never to be ashamed of uh, making the sign of the cross. And you know what, folks? Uh, we can make the sign of the cross anywhere, see? anywhere. It's a good habit that uh, when you are in church, before you enter, you know, make the sign of the cross. When you're just passing by the church and you're out in the road and you want to, you see that you're beside or passing through a church, you can make a nice sign of the cross to sign yourself as a Christian. When you are even in a restaurant before you pray uh, the prayers before and after meals, make a nice sign of the cross. You don't have to be shy and sheepish and make, <laughs> hide from people. No, you know, we've always done it in our own family. We pray even in restaurants and we make a good sign of the cross. Okay, because as the catechism says, what is the sign of a Christian? What's the answer to the question? Now, of course, the sign of the Christian is the sign of the cross, right? So that is the best way we can exhibit our being a Christian everywhere we are. By the way, folks, catechism, all of these questions I'm asking are in the catechism, okay? Now, how can we honor the cross in our daily lives? Okay, let's go. What are the Catholic practices that we can, uh, we can look at here to honor, help on, uh, to honor the cross in our daily lives? Okay, one, what's a, you have a suggestion? Oh, not time for questions now, Joe. Let's go to the ways by which we can honor the cross, okay? Number one, number one, it's been the habit, it's been a habit I have been keeping since I was a teenager. Always keeping the cross in my pocket. Okay, right? You all you also each have crucifixes, right? It's a good habit to always keep the cross with us. And that is besides the rosary, see? Okay? You see how I have been uh, wearing my rosary on my 
<laughs> on my wrist since the time I acquired this rosary in May. Uh, but besides the rosary, I keep the cross. And why is that? Because the cross really reminds us of many things. Number one, uh, our salvation, right? It keeps us, uh, keeps us uh, on our toes as far as remembering uh, how our Lord suffered for our own sins. At the same time, it helps keep presence of God. See, uh, if, if we know that we have the cross uh, with us all the time, it helps us to keep presence of God. I just keep this in my pocket. See, I bring it out when I, when I work. I would, uh, I would kiss the cross and bring it, put it on my desk, for example. See? If it's not the cross, sometimes I put the picture of Our Lady, and that helps me keep presence of God while I'm working. See? That is a very good habit, very nice habit to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing I just did, kissing the cross, reverently kissing the cross is a very nice expression of our Catholic faith. See, and, and by the way, every time we do these things, every time we kiss the cross, every time we, we make the sign of the cross, we are actually expressing the mysteries of our faith. We are expressing faith. What, what mysteries of faith? The the, the, number one of which is the Trinity, the Trinity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So the Trinity is, is what we try to express. Uh, number three, we can bow to the cross. See? Uh, we, we, we can make a reverent bow every time we see the cross in our midst, either at church or everywhere we are. See, we can bow to the cross. And that is another way of showing uh, honor and reverence for the cross. Another what is that? Another way of, of uh, honoring the cross is by displaying crucifixes in our homes. Okay? So just look around the house. Right? How many crucifixes do we have in the cross? We have one right there, uh, right in the center of our home. <laughs> right in the center of our home, we have uh, uh, two crosses, in fact, that we display, which covers... Uh, a large area and everybody can see it that is why every time you pass through the family room right it would be a good habit to say hi to jesus on the cross okay maybe say an act of contrition see? when you see the cross maybe maybe uh, 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 do a miserere see see have mercy on me my lord when you see the sign of the cross see? these are the many different ways by which we can honor the cross in our lives every day. See? Okay, so it's time, folks. Time to go. But today, hopefully, uh, we've been able to uh, review the different ways by which we can make the sign of the cross and the cross itself very much part of our lives and give it its prominent place that it deserves and the very center of our Christian life. Yes, you got a question? Joe, you reserve it for later, okay? Have a good day, everybody. Happy Feast Day. We're off to Mass right now. Have a good day. Bye-bye.